Welcome to this presentation on decision models and optimization problems. As you make your decision on whether or not to pursue an MBA, we'd like to talk to you about this very important subject uh, in, in the context of making real world business decisions, right? So if you look at the world today, we have data coming in from so many places and we need to make decisions based on this data. And what this subject helps you do is it helps you understand the different trade-offs involved and put this data in a particular context to be able to analyze how you can best meet the objective for your particular business, right? So over the next five to 10 minutes, we're going to talk to you about the different techniques followed in this subject, which will help you better understand how you can use data to your advantage strategically to make the right kind of, to make the right kind of business decisions. So let's get a bit more specific and, and understand what we're really talking about. Right? When we say we're talking about solving a business problem using math, there are two key parts to understand here. The first one is a goal, right? Every business has a particular goal or an objective that you seek to accomplish by using these tools. So for example, this could be you want to maximize your revenues. It could mean you want to minimize your costs. So for example, if you're running a manufacturing plant, your goal could be that what kind of products should I make so in a way that I get the maximum amount of revenue. Or your goal could be, what kind of products should I make such that I incur the lowest amount of cost? These are two distinct goals and will require two different kinds of decisions. And these decisions are made in the context of what we call a constraint. Every business operates under the paradigm of a finite amount of resources, which could be, for example, the amount of labor you have, the amount of machine hours you have. And what you need to answer then is, given this finite amount of capacity or power that I have, what kind of decisions do I make such that I achieve my goal of getting a maximum profit? All right, so let's take an example that we can all relate to, right? I'm sure everyone has used Uber at, at some point of time. So what is the constraint that Uber, Uber operates under? Right? When, you, when you open your phone and request for a taxi, Uber has a limited number of taxis to choose from which are in your area, and it needs to decide which of those taxis should then go and serve you. Now, what is the objective that Uber might have in mind while doing this, right? There could be multiple objectives. One of the objectives could be uh, they want to maximize the revenue from uh, the pickup that they have, or it could also be that because they're focusing on growth, they want to minimize the waiting time to give you the best customer experience and ensure that you use Uber over and over again. This is an example of a real world decision where there's a lot, where there is a lot of data, there's a clear constraint and some objectives and Uber needs to use these kind of techniques to best decide how they can serve you from the multiple taxis that they have. So now we'll talk about three specific techniques that you learn about if you choose to do an MBA about how you can actually solve these kind of problems and get the outcome you so desire, right? The first technique is linear programming. Uh, the next technique is a decision tree, which is kind of a logical flow of your thought just mapped out with certain payoffs associated with it. And the third one is a mathematical simulation. So now let's look at each of these techniques beginning with linear programming. look at the first technique which is linear programming right this is one of the simpler techniques what we do is we break down the problem into its into an objective function and a decision variable and its constraints what does this mean right? let's go back to the uber example that we saw the constraints was the number of taxis that we can give a particular area the objective function let's say for example is to maximize our revenue and the decision variable therefore is which taxi which particular taxi to send in which particular area so what we do is once we break down the problem into this kind of a structure we feed it to a black box called solver right? this is just a mathematical tool which you'll learn about during the course of your mba you don't need to worry about the details of what it does think of it as a black box you give it a number it gives you a number in return so once you give these numbers to solver it will give you what is called an allocation decision for every particular taxi it'll tell you which area it should go to so that's the first technique called linear programming all right so the next technique that we study is known as decision trees at times what happens is there's some uncertainty involved in our business processes and we need to update our decision based on what may or may not happen and we, we need we need to take into account these risks and uncertainties in a way that gives us the overall uh, best outcome for our business. So let's take, let's take for example, the very same decision that y'all are facing, that is, should you do an MBA? Let's say there are two things in your short-term career that you're unsure about, which is 
should you go ahead and start up or should you try and get a promotion at work? What a decision tree does is it would look at the probabilities associated with these. So we break down the possibility of doing a startup as two more parts, which is, do you get funding or do you have to bootstrap? And we say, let's say if you do an MBA, the probability of getting funding and a payoff associated with that is higher versus if you don't. And we do the same thing for if you choose to bootstrap. So 1000 is the payoff if you do an MBA and try for funding and uh, you lose 100 if you don't have an MBA because you may not get funding. Right here, the assumption is that an MBA gives you a brand and education and a network that will help you get the kind of outcome that you want. And we, we associate we associate we associate somewhat with somewhat a similar kind of outcomes for getting a promotion at work and you associate payoffs with that. What a decision tree does is, is you, you work backward from the payoffs that you have and you look at what is the expected what is the expected value of your payoff at every particular node. So we can see that you're in under both scenarios you're somewhat better off if you do an MBA. Obviously this is based on the kind of payoffs you associate with it. So someone might say that I'm very well capable of getting funding without doing an MBA, in which case the tree would inverse and you would have a different decision. But broadly what, what the purpose of decision trees is, is to help you make decisions in the face of uncertainty. So the final technique we look at is a simulation, right? Why is a simulation useful? What we need to understand is in the previous in the previous scenario where we looked at a decision tree, we had two possible outcomes with a few uh, outcomes associated with them. In the real world, we could have thousands of outcomes that might be possible with a particular variable. So for example, if I want to know what my sales will be and that therefore decides what my revenue is, my sales could be anything between say 1,000 and 100,000. And it's not possible for me to make a decision tree for every particular value, right? The next thing is you often have you, you, you often have large amounts of missing data in your in, in your sales data and you need to you need to take that into account. So that's what a simulation does. It helps you take into account large amounts of data and missing data. So how is it used, right? A simulation is used. You have to define an input variable and an output variable. So you basically say my sales can be anything between one thousand and uh, 1,000 and 100,000 with equal probability. That's your input variable distribution. Right? It's just a fancy word for a simple concept. And then you also define what your output variable is. You say, I want my output variable to be my revenue, which is equal to uh, my sales into say the price, which is 100, which is fixed for all products. And therefore, based on the different values sales can take, it'll tell you what the different values your revenue can take. And that's how a simulation helps you in the real world. The final thing I want to talk to you about is to help you to get to know your faculty, right? So this is Professor Sumit Kunumka. He's going to be teaching you decision models and op decision models uh, and optimization problems. If you do choose to do your MBA, this is his background, as you can see, stellar academic credentials. What is also worth noting is that Professor Sumit has been involved with major industry engagements. So he's worked, for example, with a major international airline in helping them understand how they should uh, work on their code share optimization to get the maximum amount of revenue. He's worked with a major e-commerce player to help them build their recommendation engine to map the similarity between products. So you can see decision models doesn't only have uh, only have only have applications, for example, in a very manufacturing kind of setting, but it also has it also has applications in very real world upcoming sort of Gen Y kind of businesses. And this is something that will be very, very useful as you choose to make your careers forward. All right, it's been very nice talking to you. I really hope uh, you like the presentation. If you have any questions, our details are on the next slide and you can reach out to us. Thank you very much for your time.